Hello and welcome back. We are doing queries for our entities now. Uh, so this is going to be the full uh, 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 integration tests for them so we can figure out what is it going to look like from the user's point of view. And uh, uh, maybe we can start getting the idea of how it's going to work behind the scenes. So let's go ahead and uh, and just start writing the test for this and we'll just figure it out as we go along. So test function, this is going to be query for entities. Uh, I don't know if we're going to have the result coming back or not. So I'm going to just leave that off right now. Um, all right. So first of all, we know we have to have a world uh, and multiple components. Let's go ahead and register those. Um, we also know we have to like create an entity. So let's do that too. Let's just do all of this. Copy you in here. Now, this is one entity that has both a location and a size. So something that I want to be able to do is if I have multiple entities, but they don't have the same number of components, when I query for something, I basically say, hey, give me all the entities that have locations and sizes and therefore ignore things that do not. So let's say we have location and size here. We can uh, copy this again and now give, you know, have an entity that only has a size. Then we can have a world that only has a location. Uh, and then give me a world that has both again. Now, if I want to do this, uh, oh, and you need semicolons there. Okay. Uh, you are, oh, we do, we are going to return results here. Result that. Okay, that'll make you happy again. All right, so let's start off. Let's make these numbers unique so that way when we test, uh, when we get these entities back, we, we know which one we got. So we have, you know, 42, 24. That's fine for this first one. Uh, let's just start incrementing. So that second element is that. This is 43, 25. This is 44, 26, and 12. Okay, so the idea here is that I want to be able to query for everything that has uh, a location and a size, which means that we're gonna skip these two entities. So we have four in the world, but our query is only gonna grab two. That's the idea at least. Um, so, and then of course, if I wanted everything that has a size, I would get three because we have you, you have a size, you have a size, and you have a size. But I'd only be getting the components that I'm querying for. So it's it's going to be a little bit interesting. We have to figure out behind the scenes how to ensure that we're only grabbing exactly what we want to grab. All right, so what would this look like, uh, let's say? Um, we would want to maybe like start a query off let query equals world dot query, something like that. Um, and then uh, we have to tell it that we want like with a component. So I think we can maybe use the same pattern here. So we can do something like with components. Uh, we want location components size okay so with both of these components um now we don't it's probably gonna be like continuing to like add in like the components that we're, we're looking for into like a query so it's probably building the query behind the scenes so we're gonna actually need to to run this so something like then a run and that's gonna give us some kind of a query back. So it could be maybe like a vector of vectors. It could be maybe a hash map of like the location that we're looking for. 
I think a vector of vectors might make sense here because then we can say, okay, uh, the first one is the first one that we're looking for. The second one is the second one that we're looking for. So then uh, if I want to get, like let's uh, bring these all out again. These are gonna be the locations is equal to uh, like a query of position zero, let's say. And we're also gonna have uh, sizes for a position one. Okay. Then once we have that, okay, what are the, some things that we want to like ensure here? We want to ensure that the sizes of each other are the same. So the length of locations and sizes should be exactly the same here. Uh, so let's do, um, Uh, so equal locations dot length. And so to make sure that you understand what this is, you're a vec of something. Um, that's a good question. What is this a vector of? It's going to have to be that RC ref cell, isn't it? It's going to have to be a vector of, um, an RC ref cell, oop, too big. Uh, that then does, well, it's the dyne any, right? It's uh, because we're gonna have to downcast it once we get this. And really, our sizes is gonna be the same thing. It's gonna be it's gonna be something like this. So then if we do locations dot length, we want you to make sure that sizes dot length. Okay, so that's one assertion that we can do here. Um, another assertion would be to ensure that um, well we should we should also assure assert that uh, locations we only got essentially two of them. So let's just assert equal location, not that, locations.length is two, okay. What else, what else do we know should be true here? Um, well, our first location should be this 4224 and the first size should be 10 and then the second item should be this. So we can now grab out maybe the first item. So let's do, now how, how are we gonna grab this out? We don't necessarily have like a macro or anything and we could potentially do that in the future um, to like make this a little bit easier, but we'd probably do something like iterate through the, the locations and the sizes and then, um, do any operations we want on there. However, I'm not gonna do the full iteration in this loop because, or in this test, because uh, then I don't know if I'm gonna be able to assert anything from that. Um, so let's instead just test the first one and the second one. So for our first one, we need to extract into here and we need to borrow this, so that borrowed first location. It's gonna be equal to, it's gonna have locations of position zero, and then I want to borrow it. Okay, that gives us this ref dime. Um, then, okay, so I've got this ref dime. Now I want to downcast that. So I think I can just downcast it into the locations now. So locations um, equals the borrowed first location. We're gonna downcast ref. And that's gonna be 
uh, I guess a location. Um, this gives us an option, so we're gonna have to unwrap it. And then that, okay, so we should have a location from this now. So now we should be able to assert equal that uh, location. So really this is not, we, we shouldn't be shadowing locations now. We should just really like, this is the location that we're, this is the first location. First location. First location dot zero essentially, because here's this location. So dot zero uh, should be equal to, uh, I guess it's um, 42. That's it. I don't think I need to check the other one because uh, we should know there's nothing else that's 42 here. And then we can get the size maybe of um, the first one or maybe the last one. And then that should that should let us know that like they're the right things. We can also get the uh, the size of the first one too. We... This might be an overly complicated test, but it's also helping us like understand how we want these queries to work before we go write the code to make the queries work. This is gonna be borrowed first location here. So you're gonna be size. So borrowed first size is from sizes of zero borrow. First size, borrowed first size, downcast ref to size. And then we have first size of zero should actually be 10. Okay. Great. We, oh, and these need to be macros. Okay. Uh, are you, do you not know? Oh, import any. Yes. Oh yeah, that helps with the, uh, the autocomplete a little bit. Okay. And then uh, we can do the same, second thing for like the second one, because we should make sure that we get these out too. So I'm just going to grab this entire block and we're going to copy it and do the same thing. But now instead of first, it's gonna be second. Okay, so borrowed second location is locations. So wherever we see this, it's now gonna be a one. We're gonna borrow, okay. And then I think it's exactly the same, but second location should actually be 44 and the second size should be 12. Now, if I try to run this code, we're going to get an error. Well, that's because world doesn't have a query method on it. So let's go ahead and add that. So at least it doesn't uh, have a compile error. So in our main library, let's go. Okay. So impl world. A function query. Now, I don't think we need to have a mutable self on here because we're just going to get everything as a reference because it's in those RC's ref cells. So in that way, this can just be a reference, reference to self. Um, and we need to return something, some kind of data structure because we need something with this like with component on it. Now, I don't know if I want, like, we already have a with component off of entities, and that is doing a very specific thing. So I'm thinking we need some kind of like special query component that we're gonna have to uh, return. So let's go, let's create that too. So now these queries are only gonna have anything to do with entities, right? So what I wanna do is I'm gonna create a new folder entities and inside of that we're going to put in a uh, query and then entities we're going to mod here so underneath our uses we're going to do a pub mod entities 
or above. I, I go back and forth sometimes. Uh, Rust Analyzer sometimes also reorders them for me. Um, oh, it's uh, not, not entities, it's query. So this is gonna be looking inside of the folder query. Even though entities is outside of that folder, that's kind of how the uh, the module system is working here. Uh, okay, so then back to the main library. Oh, actually, before that, we need we need this data structure. So we're gonna have like pub struct query. Uh, we don't know what needs to be on it, so we're not gonna worry too much. Back to here, so you're gonna return a query. So. If we do that, we need some kind of like query new uh, to sort of like build this out. So let's come back to query. We'll impl query a function new. This will return a new self and it will just return self like that. Okay, so then here we'll just do a query new and return that. Okay, so then this is going to be happy here. However, we still don't have this with component. We're still missing that. So let's come back to query and we're going to have to add in this function sort of like a stub for that hub function with component. Um, now, in this case, we know it's going to have to be mutating something in here because it's recording down what those components are. So itself um, we also know that it's taking in like the type information. So it's gonna be a type that we know it's any, uh, but after that, we don't necessarily know anything. And we also know it's gonna be returning a mutable reference to self so that we can just do continue to do with component on. So mutable reference to self. Uh, and so in this case, we'll just return to self. Okay, so that makes this happy. And then we're gonna have this run. So we need another stub here, a function run. Um, this also is not gonna have to have um, a mutable reference to self. It's just gonna be a reference. And it doesn't look like we need to, well, we need to return something, don't we? We need to return a, um, like a vector of, well, of these, right? A vector of vectors. So that's a vec of a vec. Um, and then inside of those is gonna be RCs. And then inside of that is gonna be ref cells. And then that's gonna be dime any. Uh, so let's just go ahead and return an empty vector right now, which will satisfy this and make it not air out. And if we come back to here, um, you are, let's see, what's the problem here? Oh, cannot move out. So we don't necessarily want to move out. And, we, and when we um, iterate through these normally, we can just iterate um, with reference. Let's just reference these. So we're not taking ownership here. Uh, and then you are gonna be a reference uh, here. Okay. Uh, and then you, Oh, strict comparison. So we want to allow that. Let's come back up here to the top of our test. So allow flippy float compare. And there's no more errors showing in this uh, in this test. Now, if we try to run this, it's going to fail. Absolutely. Which is completely not surprising because uh, well, we don't actually have any of the, the code working. Like this is returning an empty vector. And of course we're trying to index into that. So that's definitely not gonna work. But what we do have now is tests that will pass as soon as we get the code working. And these are the integration tests. So now we can start moving into the inner loop of the double loop testing and start figuring out how we're gonna get this entire thing to work. Uh, because there's a lot to go on here. And uh, and I think that's gonna be fine because we can break them down into smaller pieces and then deal with that uh, in one, one piece at a time. 
And I think the first thing that we're going to need to do is, is come up with our strategy of how we're going to, going to ensure that we're only going to grab the components, the entities that we really care about. So uh, in the next video, that's what we're going to do is we're going to figure that out. I'll see you then.